Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome to Youth Award today. We'll discuss about interfaith integration with different communities, different faiths, different religion, and as well among youth. So you'll be with us, and I would like to first of all, I would like to introduce our guest today. First of all, I'd like to <laughs> introduce our uh, one of uh, one of guests, Mr. Uh, Ishak Uddin. Chair Stepney Fathers Group. Most welcome to uh, Youth Hour today. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, Assalamu alaikum to our viewers. Uh, then I would like to introduce another guest, Mr. Uh, Jonathan Smith, uh, PhD student, uh, University of Leeds. Uh, most welcome to Youth Hour today. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Uh, both of uh, us, thank you for uh, being here and most welcome uh, to uh, being here today. Uh, dear viewers, you can share your opinion to call us. Uh, you can see our contact number on the screen. Please share your opinion. We will value your opinion. We will continue our program, uh, Mr. Isaac uh, by Isaac Uddin. How, how you feel today? I know. I'm a bit nervous with a um, PhD student next to me. <laughs> <laughs> and especially his voice is well. He's from America. So he's a good friend of mine. I'm glad he's came. Um, honestly, I feel uh, very proud and honored to be here with Jonathan. And yourself. I've been here last uh, week before <coughs> and um, I found it very interesting. And the topic today is we're talking about integration. Integration, yeah. And how, what is important and stuff, <coughs> I'm guessing. It's, it's, it's so important for, um, especially Muslim in this country now, because of a really bad time we're having, especially in media and other things. And uh, away from that, why is it so important, and especially because we live here? My kids are growing they're born in this country. And if you don't integrate with others, we don't learn and we don't go anywhere. So I think it's very important for us, definitely. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. We'll back to you, uh, Mr. Uh, Jonathan Smith. How do you feel today? Very good, very good. Thank you, Kavir. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. And uh, I really enjoyed seeing the show uh, from a couple of weeks ago with Ishak and felt really glad to have the opportunity to be able to speak as well. So thank you. OK. And the second question, how did you meet with uh, Mr. Brother Isaac? Good, yes. So <laughs> I, I attend a church called Salvation Army Stepney. And uh, Ishak um, has known the, the leaders of this church for about 12 years, uh, really good friends with them. And they invited me to go along to an event. I, I live in, uh, in Tower Hamlets, uh, so just, just down the road from, from Ishak. And uh, I arrived on a Saturday morning, not knowing what was going to happen, what to do. and there were a group of uh, about 10 Muslim guys and about 10 mm. uh, Christian guys. And they all, we all had uh, cleaning equipment, uh, uh, little those things used to pick up rubbish and uh, trash bags. And, we were, and they said, we're going to go clean up the neighborhood. So we, went, uh, we spent a whole day walking around, uh, picking, up, uh, picking up rubbish around and meeting neighbors. And they were so surprised to see us. Why are you here? What, you know? Uh, it was do you work for the council? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> what do you do? And we said, well, we just want to do something together for our community. And uh, since then, um, that was about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Since then, we've done a lot of activities together, bringing our communities, uh, Christians, Muslims, people of all faiths and beliefs together in, in our community. Uh, I know so far you are doing lots of community work with uh, young people, yes. uh, especially for integration with uh, young people. So wh what do you do uh, so far? What activities have you done mm. so far? Mm. So could you explain us? Yes, well, one of the main activities I've been involved in is in Shadwell, which is the, the part of Tower Hamlets where I live. And we've been doing a project for the last four years uh, during Ramadan. Uh, as you know, during the evenings of Ramadan, there's the Tarawi prayer, and a lot of people go out to pray, but also a lot of young people go out and spend time on the streets during this time. And in the past, we used to have residents or neighbors who would complain, oh, it's noisy at midnight and we're, we're not happy. And they would uh, sometimes they would, uh, you know, call the police or, you know, it would be creating a lot of tension. So we work together with local mosques and churches and residents and, and, and a youth club. And we spent time out. Uh, so now every, every night during Tarawi, we have volunteers on the streets. And we ask residents to meet with young people, get to know them, learn their names, and get to know them as people, not as a problem or as something to be worried about. And then we learn from them, what are their lives like? And we try to create better relationships uh, between 
uh, older people and younger people all together in, in our community. Yeah. Uh, do you felt any kinds of difficulties uh, when you go to uh, any, any any kinds of people, different faiths, different communities? Yeah. Do you face do you face any ki any kinds of difficulties? Among yeah. Among you? Well, I think there's a perception. Uh, I think wh where I live, because you have um, a lot of groups of young people who 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 hang out on the streets, spend time around, you know, on on streets, and there's a a perception that somehow maybe they're a gang or there's something threatening about them. But what I found, so I, when I first started to meet young people, I was a bit afraid myself. I, one person, I go up, there's a group of 15 young people. But as soon as I go up to them and say hello, always one person would say salam back and we'd start to have a conversation. And as soon as we meet them, everything is fine. I think the barrier is about not, w not knowing people and being afraid of what we think they're like rather than actually knowing what they're like. And once we know, then... <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Mr. Jonathan. Yeah. I'll come back to you again, yeah. uh, uh, Mr. Isakuddin. Uh, what do you think? Uh, wh why it is important to integration with other communities among y uh, young people or any different faiths? Wh what is the important behind that? Especially with young people, I would say it's important because whatever good value you have, when you work with them, they can see and they can follow. That's very important to show them in practice what you say you believe. And I met lots of people, you know, lots of uh, people from other faith, even my faith. You know, young people are young people. They're born here. They're English. My kids are born here. They're English. My younger brother will say, Abu, I'm not Bangladeshi. I was born here, so I'm English. You know? The argument I can't win because you're born in Bangladesh, that's why you call yourself Bangladeshi. <laughs> I'm born here, I'm an English. <laughs> I will say, okay, that's fine. But the value we carry is important to pass on to the others. If you want to see their generations of next generation, better citizen and better people, you have to show up and teach them. So what we do is, I also help um, Milestone, they have a boxing club. And, um, and also I help another group um, with Oceania Connection, uh, Taekwondo, we do, we have 30 kids. So I tell my friends, look, when you go and work with them, just do salam and just be normal with them. They value so much because you are so friendly with them. Young people mm -hmm. simply think, Olders are always tell us not to do this, not to do that. Mm -hmm. When they see a friendly face, actually they will listen to you. That's the best way to teach them. And I think this is, we need to work with them so we can pass our uh, good, um, the works we do. And for them, they can see the achievement. I think with Jonathan, in, in Ramadan, we've done so much stuff together, like um, interfaith, um, iftas. Mm -hmm. That was amazing and eye-opening to the lots of people. And, and they're still my friends now, you know, they, people from New Zealand, people from Australia, James from Australia, and other people came into it. And they said, nobody welcomes us like this. Exactly. It's the first time mm. I came in, and you guys are, so, you know, because pe what people see in the media, they used to think everybody's probably like that. They probably want to think like that, probably they're all like that. Well, I'm a Jonathan, actually, he is a really close friend of mine, you know, he came to my house. Can, I, have can a, I have him into his house can yet. Can I so go back, back to, uh, you know, uh, the another question? Sure. Uh, mm, sure. Uh, I asked about uh, the when, when you meet with uh, uh, Brother Isaac. Yes. He, he told me about these things. Uh, could you tell us how you did uh, meet with Jonathan? Oh, it's the same and place. Yes. Same place <laughs> cleaning. Yeah, okay. Mm. My wife said, you know, that it was a picture was taken, it was in the paper in, in this country, it was, it was in the Bangladesh too, the paper. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My wife said, what would people say? People say you're working, you're cleaning a street from Bangladesh. They won't, they won't understand the thing you're doing it for. I said, this is a volunteer. Once we go around and do this kind of stuff, and, and, and it's a mixed group, 10 uh, um, white people and 10 Bangladeshi people and 10 English friends, together they can see the community is flourishing. In, in, in Tower Hamlet, people think we don't, we're isolated, we don't mix with anybody. Well, not in all cases. That's not true, actually. And that proves that. Our it action proves that. Mm -hmm. Also, I was with him uh, as in uh, Better Bangla in, 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 the, um, in the Ramadan. You know, so we were grilling each other, so we <laughs> know a lot of things about each other. And, and once you become friends, actually, you can easily ask them anything about anything. You know, like you, you b go beyond your things, and they will explain to you. Yeah. So I would love to know if Jonathan shares, you know, like the Muslims in America, how they are there. He's seen it here, he's seen it in America. I'm sure they're a happy place there, I'm sure. Uh, can you tell us, Jonathan, how, how, how the uh, American Muslim and yeah. British, uh, British Muslim? So 
basically a comparison with uh, yeah, it's, other countries? Yeah, it's a good question, Gore. <laughs> it's, it's hard to compare. I, well, I, I'm from Atlanta in the States, which is in the South, and we have a fairly large Muslim community, but they're very spread out in different parts of the city, not in one in one place, which I think is a difference in, in Tower Hamlets, where I live now, there's such there's a large Muslim community, which which is a lot of good things, is a good good way to get easier to get to know people. Um, but I think in in, uh, in the US, uh, when you look on the media, you see the demonstrations that people have a, about mosques, you know, against mosques, or you see some uh, public speakers who are very anti Islam. But I, I think they don't the majority of Americans don't agree with this and don't feel this way. But you have some people who get on television and, you know, get a lot of, uh, you know, be famous for doing this. Uh, you know, there was a story a few weeks ago about a demonstration against a mosque. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, um, people come out with guns and stand around the mosque and say, we want the Muslims to, to leave. Uh, and it's one of the people in the mosque, they invited some people at the demonstration to come and join them. So the people came inside the mosque and they had tea with them and they spoke with them. And then one of the guys afterwards came out and said, I feel so bad about what we did. It was really wrong. And the people here are lovely people. They're really good Americans. So, so I think in some ways there's a bit of a similarity between what we have in the UK and the US that you yes. have some people who get media coverage who are okay. saying very negative things. But usually if it's that way because they haven't met someone, if they meet someone from the other community and get to know them, then usually they think, oh, okay. it's so fine. You were yeah. working, working with uh, different communities uh, for yeah. integration. Are, are yes. you making any difference? Well, that's, that's a good question. I, I, hope, I hope so. I, I, I pray so. I, I think if we do something, we want to make a difference. But we should do it because we think it's right and because we know it's important whether or not it makes a big difference. And I think it's a challenge when we do community work. If we do work in politics or uh, IT, a lot of other fields, you can get a lot of publicity because everyone sees you. You have cameras. If I, if I send an email to the BBC and say, oh, we're holding an interfaith lunch this Sunday and we have 200 Muslims and Christians coming together to have lunch, will you come and cover it? Yeah. But if I say, oh, we have this. We have a fight between uh, these two neighbors, and one is Christian, and one is Muslim. Will you cover it? They yes, they're, you know yeah. they're come. So, so uh, I think um, we have to distinguish between having good publicity and between making a difference. And what I can say, I feel very sure that the relationships that I've built with people like Ishak, with other, with my neighbors, and the people that I know from the different churches and mosques who work together, it has changed their lives. That we know, we feel closer to people in our community, and that we know we can make. A difference in the community. Uh, another yeah. question I can raise both mm. of you is uh, yeah. faith a failure at the moment? Wow. Uh, mm. Do we feel that faith is, is the faith failing? Fa yeah. Well, can I'll I? Let you <laughs> <take> <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get me beat him. Um, <laughs> okay, let me give you a first one: um, the wit witness of success okay. mm. uh, regarding Jonathan. You know, this is amazing. Muslims are praying in the mosque in, the, uh, in, the, in the Ramadan, and the Christians are looking after them outside the mosque. This is what he done yeah. whole month. This is one of the best examples we can have in Tower Hamlet. You know, I, if, I would give this for you, and don't, honestly. This is amazing stuff. Regarding, uh, um, is, if I want to be, I have to be honest, uh, it's no good playing politics because we're not politicians. For leadership rules, we are failing. We, uh, the, the faith group not giving leadership to the, uh, the community or the society. The, 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 I think that we are failing there. Another place we're failing is we're not coming out and talking about the extremism, especially in like place like uh, it didn't rise. I'll say it like ISIS. I think our leaders are failing. They need to come out and say, these guys in the name of Islam, what they're doing, we don't support. This is something what they're doing, uh, nothing to do with Islam. The more we come out, the people will think, people can see the real side of the Islam. Because we're so silent, what does it mean? When you're silent, what does it mean? Are you supporting them or not supporting them? Why don't we have courage to come and say, look, what they're doing is really wrong. Things they're doing to Muslims. Anyway, if, if you're a Muslim or non-Muslim, it doesn't make any difference. So we need to come out. I think we're failing in, the, in that field. Uh, um, but this is one side of it. But if you see the community work, if you see the charity as, as a community, work, we as, a community as a charity, mm. yeah. they are flourishing. There's no one can catch yeah. that. Salvation Army, they have a billion pound of project. 
Islamic relief, Muslim aid, you name it. Uh, um, Christian relief, these things are happening by the faith group. So I think as a faith, I don't think we are failing, no. But because we don't control media, we're always going to be limelighters. No, they're not doing their job well. Mr. Jonathan, do you want to add anything? Well, I, I think... I think maybe I agree with, with Ishak that a lot of the problem is about perception rather than reality of what's happening. Um, but I think the, the way that we make a difference is when we come together, really different people come together to work together for a project. We really see everyone takes notice. And I think sometimes in faith communities we tend to be a bit, uh, we're concerned about our own people, which is good because we need, we need to be, but sometimes we forget that even with a little bit of work across communities, then everyone will pay attention. When you see people who are very different working together, people start to be surprised. Oh, what, what are they doing? And I think that's an area that we can, we can do, do more of. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Isaac mentioned that uh, about uh, ISIS. What is mm. your view uh, on uh, ISIS? Do you have any, any, any kinds of comments? Well, I mean, uh, it's, in fact, I don't know anyone in the world, uh, any group, any major group who is supportive of, of, uh, of ISIS. So, uh, so I would agree with that. Um, but I think there's a real problem with e extremism in, in, all, in all communities. And uh, when I, I used to live, I think Ishak uh, mentioned, uh, said that I, previously I used to teach at a university uh, in the West Bank and uh, in the Palestinian territories. And I had a really good friend at the university who was a, a Palestinian teacher. And we, we talked a lot about the problems in the Middle East and the problems in the US and the problems in the UK. And we said, what can we, what can we do about this? And we said, we think the best thing is, let's each do something to improve our own community. So he said, as a Palestinian, I'm gonna to work to improve my community and to counteract and work against extremism there. And I would like you as a Christian and as an American to do the same for your people. And I think that when we work together in this way, we can see a lot of good uh, change happen. Okay, Ishaq yeah. do you have any, any comments or? Um, I forgot the question, actually. I was looking at him, I was very interested to know. ISIS, what was the question again, sir? Views on ISIS. <laughs> if you look at the Middle East, I, think we, I can talk about it because I'm Muslim. It's, it's good to talk. Uh, um, if you look at the um, Middle East, Syria, Iraq, um, um, Libya, would anybody want to live there? Would I want to live with my family there? I mean, look, at, there, is no, there is no law, there is nothing there. What's going to happen in five years' time? Not Africa. No jobs, no nothing. So what are, we, what are they promoting and what are they doing? I mean, this is out of my head. I, I just can't work it out. I it sounds like there's nothing there. And around the world, who's killing them? Also Muslims. Go and bombing with, okay, they're asking America to help them, the British to help them, they're asking everybody to help them. And they're going and help them out, just get rid of those criminals. And uh, we can see some young people going from this country too. This can be a disaster for Muslims. You know, so we need to wake up and say, look, we have to do something about that. And some people are always going to be in their side anyway, what can we do? We always, we always have a crazy, crazy people in, in all sides. They will agree with what they do. But if you, you know, uh, a human being and see what they're doing to people, no, no. So the Islam I know is nothing to do with Islam. Islam I know is very peace loving. It's really uh, amazing faith I follow. So is, mm. is religion a problem for us? It's not a problem at all. It's people are using the religion for their own purpose. Nothing else. People are using. What they're doing is Islam, if you see um, Jonathan, you know, he, he, he would be more expert in those than doing his PhD. The Islam I follow, what I see, Islam is, is the way of life. And uh, he, he controls the state, a community, and everything else. So it's just like if, if Islam was here, it's just like you're controlling everything. So what they're doing is they pick and choosing. Mm -hmm. ISIS is pick and choosing. And they're just using one paragraph of the, uh, probably of the Quran, and they're using it against everything else. So they're misusing it. But it's not only I said, there are lots of groups in the world. They're misusing their own religion, I'm afraid, so. Okay, Mr. Jonathan, do you have any, any kinds of comments? Because he mentioned uh, some of young people, they are going from here to another country for some purposes. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, is uh, religion a problem for us? Or do, do, can you make any, any kinds of comments yeah. about that? I, I don't 
feel like that the the main problem with this 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 happening has to do with religion. I think if 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 a young person is involved in their faith, their faith will make them want to to do something positive to work for their community, uh, and they won't feel the need to. They will feel if they they want to help people in other countries, and there's a lot we need to do to support Syrian refugees, to support people who are suffering in the situation now, and to to really lobby our governments to make a difference in the in the in the region. But I'm, there are many ways of doing that, and I don't think that the problem has to, is to do with religion. It's to do with certain people who want to recruit young people for their own political purpose, and they they bring them over. But in some ways, I feel like it's. It's a it's a failure for for us in in the UK if we don't have something more attractive to give young people. If the thing that they're attracted to is that, then we need to do more to give them something to feel they're a part of our community. They add to it. They can contribute. They can make make a difference in a way that they won't be able to do if they travel anywhere else. They can make a difference here. Okay. How how we can stop them? No, is there any way or anything like that? So you, you, you can yeah. Mention? I'm, I mean, I think that's that, uh, one of the main things is, is providing good alternatives for young people. Because I think, uh, I remember when I, was, uh, when I was in university and before when I was uh, in, you know, high school, they call high school in the U.S., uh, was it A-levels? <laughs> high school. Oh, we still have um, the hair. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, yeah. We, you know, we, you, you know, we get really, young people get really passionate about things. And when we find out that there's injustice in the world, we want to do something about it. We don't want to just sit down and have people say, oh, you're young, you can't do anything, you know, you just, that's the way the world is, the world is unjust. We want to do something. So I think when young people get motivated in this way, we should, we should have things for them to do. We can say, this is a campaign you can join. This is a way you can change the lives of Syrians who are suffering. We give people ways to get involved in a positive way. And then they won't be, they, they will see this is better than the other alternative. So I think that's, that's the main thing that we should do. You know, I find very interesting um, meeting new people, people from different faiths, different, different groups. When you get to know them, honestly, you will see the world is really beautiful. Honestly, it's a really beautiful world. There are beautiful people around as well, honestly. Because we're not meeting them, we're just meeting the people who want to argue. You. You're isolated yourself. And some of us, we are hiding behind other, our foreign policy, this policy. We just, our failing, we are hiding behind their policy. Forget about the other policy. What is your policy? That's what you've got to come up with. I remember I interviewed one of the, um, one person. So he, he kept telling me, I said to him, why are we failing in the Middle East? All those leaders and all those you know, politicians, why are we failing? Why is our countries are so messed up? And we're promoting uh, our religion's beautiful. And why, what's going on here? And he said to me, the, the foreign policy of this country. I said, no, no, stop blaming other people. Stop, stop you know, blaming yourself and try to change it. Tell me the policy, which part of the policy you don't like, then we can talk about it. Don't just say foreign policy. Don't just say other policy. Don't just say name it. Give me a specific thing you don't like, and we can talk about it. No, foreign policy. What does it mean by foreign policy? It's a big thing. We are, honestly, we are, people are coming to Americans and these guys and say, come and help us. We are taking that. They're not going there. Yes, they're going to play the role. They will play a role. You know, they go in there, they have their own probably agenda, who knows, good or bad, whatever. But we just keep blaming others. What's, what's wrong with us? Why don't we stand up to our wrongs? Who was better? Uh, Gaddafi was there. What was he doing? Saddam was there. What was he doing? S in Syria, and uh, Assad was doing. Why don't we talk about this lot too? If you want to blame anybody, make sure you have be fair on them. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Your generation after you will do the same thing, same mistakes again and again over. In First World War, Second World War, we had it in Europe. Look at them now. They're friends now. Uh, UK and, and, and France. Yeah. But look at them now, honestly. In, in Ireland, they learned. IRA, they learned. What can't we learn? So I think we need to look at ourselves first. But I think we have a problem in, 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 in our society. Is we have a religious group and we have a non-religious group. So what we're doing, we keep blaming ourselves. No, we need to come together. Honestly, we need to come together. And say, let's find a solution. Exactly. Otherwise, none of us can be in a happy, you know, state. And we are becoming politician now. <laughs> I don't want Jonathan, to be yes. you have done lots of work uh, with integration for uh, different groups. Mm. So how we can get together? As uh, Ishak mentioned that, how yeah. we can, uh, do you take uh, any kinds of challenge or for young, especially young people, yeah. how they can uh, get together or how can they integrate with any other communities, mm. any faiths? 
Yeah, well, it's a good question. We, we were actually talking about this yesterday. I was doing an interfaith workshop with 10 uh, Bangladeshi, British Bangladeshi young people in, in my community. And we were talking about negative stereotypes about young people and young people who are Muslims and what can we do to counter those stereotypes. And they came up with some fantastic ideas, much, much better than mine. So I'll, I'll, can I tell you some of their yes, ideas? Yes, obviously, yeah. <laughs> so they, they said, um, one of them, they said, we really would like to have a, a fun day uh, in our neighborhood so that people who don't know us can come up and talk to us and we can get to know them in a, in a comfortable environment. So not just to see people on the street and nod at them, but actually come up and get to know them, know where they live, know, know more about them. Uh, and another one who is an art student said that he wants to do more with arts to confront the stereotypes about Muslims and about religion as well to kind of create a positive image okay. and to that. So I think there, uh, there are many ways, and in fact, young people usually have a lot of the solutions for the problems that we have. Uh, the, the challenge is how to work with them to make the make these things happen. So, mm -hmm. yeah. any, any kinds of consequence of uh, interfaith uh, uh, integration or interfaith? Uh, I think for the young people, it's not uh, <laughs> um, quite a new thing. I think yeah. we have feast, and um, in Ramadan yeah. we had iftar gathering. It was really positive okay. uh, feast. Um, but integration is happening in the schools and everywhere mm -hmm. else. You know, people are not comfortable talking about the religion because they don't have a proper identity. Young people are, you know, like that, and that's how you've seen. I think the more they talk about the f the faith or the identity, they feel comfortable talking because faith group gives you a, a moral, very standard uh, moral thing. It does give you stuff like mm -hmm. that. You know, you forgive people, you think about good about people, you love your neighbors. You know, you know, it, they are really, really important things they give you. And especially in Islam, he talks about, you know, Rahma. You know, like he talks about, the problem is we're not talking about those uh, good quality of Muslims in Islam at all. We're just talking about other big issues like in Palestine and these kind of issues. We're not, we're not talking about the grassroots things, mm. how to forgive people. You know, if your neighbor is, is hungry and you're eating, you're not Muslim. If you don't forgive the creation of God, he will not forgive you. Mm. If you're not pleased God, you have to forgive your, you know, uh, his creation. It means everybody else. Um, if, 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 even if your dog dies, your responsibility as a Muslim to look after that dog. You will be asked by God, what happened? You are one of the best creation of the world and you will let that dog die without any you know, food and stuff. You know, these things have been not talked about a lot. Um, how do we come out of this? You know, I, I run a, like a boxing club, I help them. If, if their parents are interested to know, we run a boxing club on Sundays. I call Milestone. If they want to know Taekwondo, we run a Taekwondo in uh, every uh, Saturday. We have also football on Sundays. You know, there are lots of things we can get the people involved. If they're isolated and doing nothing, that's where the problem starts. Mm. Okay. You shouldn't be isolated. From mm. this segment, our last question, we are ending up this segment. A last question to uh, Jonathan. How we can promote interfaith integration among young people? Mm. How we can promote them? Yeah, I think the first thing uh, and most important thing is to speak to young people and ask them what do they want to see different? What do they want to see change in their community? And usually when I, like when I mentioned this conversation yesterday, they come up with really good ideas. And then we as uh, adults should help them to make these ideas become reality. So whatever, whatever those ideas are, to work together, to invite a neighbor over for tea or a dinner, to do something to improve our community, I think we should let young people take the lead and we can support them to make those uh, dreams become true. And within one minute, you can tell uh, to our viewers, yeah. uh, uh, just from yourself, tell something uh, with integration, with uh, yeah. you know, different faiths. Yeah, good. You know, I, I think um, there's, it's really true. There's a concept in South Africa where I used to live. It's called <laughs> Ubuntu, which means that uh, if something affects one person, it affects all of us. And I think if we realize that if my neighbor is suffering, then also I am suffering, then that's where we, we can become a better community and, uh, and make a difference. Regardless of whether we're Christian, Muslim, atheist, if we care for our neighbor, that's where we, we make, uh, make a difference. You can get another 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, I grew up in, a, in an area which was segregated. Uh, my parents, actually, by law, and you know, in the US, where it was actually people were not allowed to live together from different races. And I can see how bad that is how bad it is for our society. So 
we, we as people, we shouldn't choose to live in that way. The more that we reach out and speak to someone who's different than us, then we'll become better people and also our, our community will become stronger. So that's what I encourage you to do. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thanks we have to leave you. Uh, we are ending up this segment. Uh, dear viewers, uh, we'll go to a short break. After a short break, we'll continue our program. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.